Hello, I'm Shang with Salamander Paddle Gear and I'm going to show you how to install our new kayak stacker. Here are all the parts that come with the kayak stacker. Each side has a rear hot T-bolt and two front T-bolts. The, the longer T-bolt is for racks that are extra thick. The shorter one is for most racks. Yakima, uh, most factory racks will work with the shorter one also. And this is the nut that goes to the back. Here's the tool for tightening up the front T-bolt. And then the clamp, bottom clamp, and the top of the stacker. As you can see, we've got some fairly aggressive teeth on this, so it won't slip even on Yakima round bars. It comes with a pair of nine foot padded straps, and the only tool you really need will be a 13 millimeter socket or box wrench, or you could use an adjustable wrench, and that's for adjusting this nut right here. The height of this back T bolt depends on the thickness of the bar. Basically you want an even gap when you bolt when you mount this up. You don't want something like that and you don't want something like that. You want it to be about an equal distance so it applies even pressure across the entire rack. The first thing you're going to want to do when installing this rack is to lay down a towel on top of your car. That way in case something falls you won't scratch the surface. Second thing is we're going to put the T-nut for the lower bracket on and this is a locking nut so it will require a wrench. Like I said it's a 13 millimeter and for this particular rack we've got a factory rack so we're going to tighten this nut up to about a distance of three quarters of an inch from the top of the T. So this, this particular rack's about as narrow as they come. So it will be a very snug fit. At this point, I've got both the towers installed. It can sometimes be a tiny bit tricky lining up this front bolt, not too tough. Just takes a minute or so. And as you can see, we've got very little gap in this. It is a very low profile rack this factory one so it takes up all the space between the two clamps. If it's on pretty dang tight uh, it's not going to go anywhere. Then push button on both units is facing towards me. I've given myself enough room on the rack to install one boat on this side and in this particular rack probably only going to get one more boat on the other side. Bigger cars you can get two to three boats on the other side. If you do put more than one boat on the other side, be sure and tie the bow and stern down of all the boats. Uh, otherwise you can get boats squirting out in the center. If they just have a strap going over the top on a bouncy road, you will lose a boat. I've got friends who've done so. I won't mention names. To operate the push button, you just simply push the button in and raise the tower up and it locks into place. Then when you want to lower it when you don't have a boat and you need to get back into the garage without taking the rack off, you just push the button in and lower it and it sets back down. When both racks are lowered, you can you only have about an extra six inches poking up above your car. Now when you're installing the straps, it's easiest to have the rack down and put the straps through the, the T on top. And I prefer to run it through the T rather than just around the T, that way you know it's secure. Here's a play boat that's been properly installed. Straps are running to the actual rack, not just the bar. 
Uh, you always want to do that if possible. I realize this boat could have probably fit in the glove box, but we threw it up there anyway. And here's the back of the rack. 